Hello, El Karma family all over the world. We are so excited, so happy to be with you at the dwelling place. There is nothing in the world like worshiping the Lord. There is nothing like sharing what the Lord has done in our life. Uh, we're so excited to be with you, praying the blessings over you. You're going to hear amazing, amazing testimony and a powerful time of praise and worship. I need it, you need it. Invite someone, text someone. We're just going to worship God and there is nothing like it. And when we worship the Lord, all the heaviness, all the bad things, all the stress, all the pressure can go away. cannot stand when we get into the presence of the Lord. That's why we call this program The Dwelling Place. I'm so honored to have my wonderful uh, team of uh, praise and worship people. Michaela, smile. We love your smile. <laughs> You're amazing, Michaela. I love you so much. She became like my fourth daughter now. <laughs> and the same with Margaret. So good to have you. <laughs> and the man with the diamond heart, Ryan. So good to yeah. have you. Thank you for coming and being with us. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you. And we're going to hear a powerful testimony and also teaching from a man of God, Pastor Luke. So good to have you. Thank you. From the Rock Church in Anaheim, California. If you live by, in my opinion, this is one of the greatest church, solid teaching, real people. They love God and they reach the community. So, so honored. So good to have you. Can't wait to hear your story and people will be so blessed to have you. Yeah, thank you. So uh, with that, uh, we're going to start a time of uh, praise and worship. So uh, let's just call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this time. We've come to worship you and to honor you, Lord. What a privilege, what a privilege to come and worship you. Pray blessing over this time in Jesus' name. Amen.
upon the name of the Lord that you'll touch every person watching right now your presence Lord for those they need deliverance they need to be free they need to get to know you Lord I pray Holy Spirit 
you would encounter and touch and go deeper with every person watching, every person convicted right now, Lord, I'm asking you. Thank you for your open arms of love to receive and to show your love for every person. Feels the pain or bitterness or rejection. Heal the heart, we ask you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. That was beautiful, wow. beautiful, beautiful. Wow. Wow. Hallelujah. And now it's your time. <laughs> Thanks again for uh, being with us and bringing your wonderful wife. We'd love to have her here also. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we just love to hear how, you know, the Lord has done in your life and how God is using you. And Yeah, yeah thank you so much for having me. I, I'm yeah. really excited. And boy, I, I really sense the presence of the yes, Lord me even too. here now. Yeah. And uh, God is not bound by space and time so he That's can right. minister to anybody <laughs> watching even now and praise yeah. the lord yeah my name is luke esslinger i am uh, i grew up in church in a godly home uh, my parents uh, we just had a, a lot of good things going on my dad actually owned a racing engine uh, manufacturing business uh -huh. and so we were doing all kinds of crazy stuff uh, okay. when we were younger and going to races and such and i have a younger sister as well my mom worked at a church and number That's of great. different jobs so yeah. yeah we were blessed growing up and uh, as we as I grew up and even into my my teenage years really there was a a really a demonic attack that came against my my parents mm. they were separated for a number of months a very difficult time for us and during that time when I was I was really alone a lot mm. as a young man I stumbled across pornography that spirit of lust gripped uh, yeah. my life and just really you know, locked its claws into me, didn't know who to talk to about that, didn't know how to process it. My whole teenage years of living, uh, I was the good Christian kid on the outside, mm. and on the inside, I was in complete turmoil. I hated who I was. Oh. When I laid my, my head down on the pillow at night, I just, I couldn't stand oh. who I was, and I, but I just didn't know how to get free. Mm. And around the time when I was about 15 or 16, we ended up coming to the rock Thank, praise God, there was, through a number of ways that God moved, he brought my parents back together. Uh, we ended up at The Rock with Pastors Jerry and Kimberly, and I began to be discipled, but I, I didn't know what it looked like to go all in for Jesus. I just, mm. I didn't know what it looked like to surrender my life, and I was getting filled with the Word of God, yet still so much junk in my heart. Mm. And uh, right about the time when I was 18 or 19, I was pursuing my own plan, my mm. own uh, desire for my life. I wanted to go play college basketball. I wanted to, you know, go to a university you can and do such. So good in that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I was okay. No, yeah. uh, but that was what I did my whole growing up. Was gotcha. constantly playing basketball, and uh, I got to about 19 years old. And a uh, pastor, Todd at the Rock, he mm. he s just spoke straight to my heart one day. I'll never forget where I was on the campus, and he said, "Hey, I want you to pray about joining a little young adult internship that we have." It was three months. He told me to try it, mm. which was a Holy Spirit setup for give your mm. whole life. But, mm. uh, but I prayed about it, and I thought, you know what? I'll give a few months to the Lord, and I'm, then God can help me get into a college, and you know, mm. He'll help deal. advance, Making a deal. make a deal with the Lord, right? <laughs> and so I did, and I, I went after this and pursued it, and I'll never forget. It was days into this where we were spending time in worship and prayer and in the, in the Word of God. Mm. And it was like the missing piece of my life clicked into place. I mean, I am full on in tears. I had never known what it felt like to be in God's will. Um, I mean, you live your whole life and I, I'm in and around church. And of course, there's a seeking when you're younger and you mm. have to decide that it's your faith and not your parents. But boy, I clicked into the will of God mm. and I have never look, looked back. I have wow. not been perfect by any stretch of the, of the word, but I've with all my heart pursued the Lord. And, and the Lord encountered me out of Matthew 16 mm. when he said, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. And this was the verse that got me. Whoever mm. desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever mm. loses his life for my sake will find it. And um, I remember having the picture of Abraham offering mm. Isaac up on the altar. Mm. But I just felt the Lord say, you've got to offer up basketball. You've got to offer up your own plan for your life. Mm. But... Uh, you know how God stopped Abraham? Yes. I, I felt God son. saying to me, I'm not going to stop you. You wow. have to give up your life. Everything. You have to kill and yeah. give this whole thing up. And I went from hours a day 
mm. playing basketball. That was what all I wanted to do and go to the mm. college and do all that. And from one day to the next, I dropped it. Everything, even the friends and the path and the pursuit that I had. And this is when the transition happened with the deliverance from what you used to do before. Exactly. And, the bad and so that, that really began the process of freedom for me. And I, I really was freed from that spirit. But then the Lord walked me through over those years as well how to stay free. Mm. You know, we can get free from a spirit through the power yeah. of God and someone praying. But it's another thing to walk in that freedom. Yeah, that's and, good. You know, so especially, this was actually similar to our senior pastor's testimony as yeah. well. And he shared that and so much of the word of God that he, was, that he taught me out of Proverbs 4.23. Guard your heart with all diligence yes. for out of it spring the issues of life. Yeah. And we have to stay full of the word of God and full of his spirit. Yes, that's good. And I've also actually learned over the years that when you go and minister to people as well, if you're not intentional in prayer afterwards, the, mm. the people that you're ministering to, sometimes those spirits that you're delivering will try to actually Attack latch you. themselves onto you afterwards. And I, and I got beat up at different times, you know, in my younger years of ministry. Mm. But the Lord has taught me so much. And I just, if for anyone who's watching in it, if yeah. you've ever even encountered that spirit, you might be bound by that spirit now. You can mm. command it to go yes. in the name of uh, Jesus. Mm. But it is also up to us to walk with wisdom according to the scriptures to know mm -hmm. how we are supposed to approach things. Mm -hmm. You know, for even our devices are so easy to access some, you know, vile things. And, yeah. and for us, especially all of our young guys at the church, we all have no access to app stores, no open browsers, nothing like that. We all call each other on the carpet with that because we know, we, we know yeah. what the enemy wants to do when we're isolated. Yeah. And, um, and so praise God for that and uh, been walking in freedom and, and so, much have been, so much has been done um, in my life and the way that God's mm. used me. And what's yeah. interesting, even as I was preparing for tonight, yeah. I'm so passionate about the work of the Holy Spirit in an individual. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I'll, I'll show you something later on that I caught in the scriptures, but I really believe that there's a great move of God coming mm. when... Um, when all people of God, but especially young people, catch a hold of what it looks like yeah. to become the dwelling place of uh -huh. the Holy Spirit. The name of our show. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> God must have put that together, right? But dwelling place. I, I yeah. believe that um, it's somewhat even impersonal. If we mm. only come together and relate around the Holy Spirit and around God's presence just together and we don't mm. catch what it means for God to become the one who lives inside of this dwelling place. Yeah. And so we see this progression. If you look throughout the whole Bible, it was mm. always God's desire to mm. be so deeply close, yes. intimate, and personal with us. I love that. We, he created this in the garden, yeah. right? He yes. created the garden for Adam and Eve to fully enjoy, yeah. for them to be able to, the Bible says that he walked with Adam in the cool yes. of the day. Yes. I like the cool of the day. I don't yeah. like the heat, so praise God. <laughs> Here in Southern California, we, we get to enjoy that. But in the garden, that was his desire. And yeah. then even when sin entered in, and yeah. the children of Israel get free from Egypt, yeah. from, from the slavery that they were in, and mm -hmm. they're walking through the wilderness, what happens? God still wants to be close to them. Yes. He led them by a, a pillar of cloud by day yes. and fire by night. By night. And yeah. then he rested on that temple. What a lot of people don't realize is those people are camped around that uh, tabernacle or yeah. tent, excuse me. Yeah. But the people of God are, are dwelling around that and there is a constant yeah. cloud there. Yeah. I would love to see that over mm. our church, <laughs> a Amen. constant cloud resting. Yes. Can you imagine? Yes. But this and is what people, they saw yeah. all the yeah. time. Yeah. And then we have Solomon's temple yeah. where God wants to come and be close again. So yes. Solomon offers these sacrifices. The glory of God yeah. comes in. No one can stand. You yeah. see this progression where God wants to be with his people. Magnet, kind of magnet. Absolutely. To his people. Yeah. And he, he can't help it, right? His love mm. is for his people. Throughout the Old Testament, he's resting on individuals. Mm. He's resting on these prophets. You see, his, you see the, the Spirit of God on King David. You see mm. the presence and the Spirit of God wanting to be close to people. Mm. And then for the first time ever, we saw a physical living dwelling place in the mm. person of Jesus. Yes. Jesus Good. shows up yeah. and he's baptized by John in the river. And what happens? The, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came down upon him like a dove and the Spirit of God rested on Jesus. And you remember this Hallelujah. in John 14. Yes. Jesus says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. 
Yeah. And so he's telling people, this is what it looks like for God to dwell with mm. and rest on someone. But then it wasn't, that wasn't enough. I'm always yeah. amazed by the sacrificial love of Jesus to pay the price yeah. and then to leave so that we could all be connected Man. to the Lord. Yeah. What yeah. a selfless act Intimacy, even in huh? itself. That's right. Yeah. Because I could even imagine Jesus as he's walking around on the earth, how much he loved being with us. Because from the foundation of the world, this was his desire to be close. What do you think of those that go to church Sunday morning for a couple of hours and they're done for the week, like pay oh, their duties? <laughs> I, I, almost, I almost think of people like that as I call them Wi-Fi Christians. You know, oh. Wi-Fi is something that you can connect, your you phone can passion. connect to. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you connect once a week, but then you leave. Yeah. But, you know, with our cell phones have SIM cards, right? Yeah. And I believe like the SIM card for a believer is the Holy Spirit yes. living on the inside come of us. On. That we have a constant connection yes. with God. Yes. We don't have to come just once a week and connect with Him. Yeah. But He wants to live and dwell on the mm. inside of us. And, and what, so, what does it do? I'm sorry to interrupt. But oh, no, please. What does it do for those people who are struggling with something like pornography? And Because unfortunately we've heard a lot of Christians, mm -hmm. they just you know, they hide it, right. but uh, they cannot be free and they're struggling and they're right. tormented and they're bound, uh, you know, but yeah. this is spirit. Yeah. For me personally, like I, God has given me vision personally, if I would ever try to turn on any of those things, I feel the devil is holding chains and is coming to put them around my neck and it would be hard to get out of it. Absolutely. So why should I accept that? And right. I want people to see this and right. to hear this. Because it's, it's just so deceiving. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we get this principle in the Gospels, right? Jesus teaches that if you cast a demon out, yeah. what happens? The demon goes out searching for a place Correct. to take residence. Yeah. And if he doesn't find anything, he comes back. He yeah. finds the place swept, put in order, and he brings seven more demons with him. Yeah. And we know that he's not talking about a physical place, yeah. but he's talking about Spiritual. the person of the heart. We have to be filled with the Spirit of yes, God so I that like no that. other spirits no room for it. can no re-entry here. Yes. And this is why I actually believe that yeah. being discipled to know how to be filled with the Spirit of God Hallelujah. is crucially important for yes. the life of a believer. Come on. Yes. There's a couple instances in Acts that yes. are interesting. In Acts chapter 8, Philip goes and preaches Jesus to Samaria. Okay. Okay. But what ends up happening, he comes back and he tells the apostles, basically says, hey, Samaria received Jesus. Mm. But Peter and John take a trip and they go and they finish the job. Mm. They lay hands on them for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Man. Why did they not leave it alone and just think, well, Samaria got Jesus. That's good enough. Mm. They had to finish the job yes. for them to receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. In Acts chapter 19, Paul comes yes. to the city of Ephesus. Yes. And he says, into what baptism did you receive? And they say, John's John, baptism. They haven't even heard Jesus yeah, yet. But he says, he says, have you not received the Holy Spirit? They go, we don't even know that there yep. is one. Yep. And I believe that in the discipleship process, sometimes a lot of people, they get the sinner's prayer. Yeah. They say yes to Jesus, but they're not discipled to receive the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, to yeah. become the dwelling place mm. of the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. It's so powerful. And yeah. I, I was, as I was preparing for this, I realized... There's this scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. It says yeah. this in um, verse 17. It says, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Listen to this. Flee sexual immorality. Every yeah. sin that a man does outside is outside the body. But he commits, who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. And check this out. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who yeah. is in you, whom you have from God and you are not your own for mm. you were bought at a price therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit yeah. which are God's and I, I know that scripture that we're the temple of the Holy Spirit but I was reminded even of what the devil wants to do in people mm. with those things that are sexually immoral it's the trade-off of yeah. God living and dwelling on the inside mm -hmm. of us it's this temptation that will never satisfy us and it's so crucial to yeah. be filled with the Spirit of God. But also when we are making new believers, mm. when we're sharing the gospel, this needs to be something that we teach people. Correct. Have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? 
not just said yes to Jesus in your mind and in your heart, but actually Philippians calls the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Jesus. Has the Spirit of Jesus come and dwelt and taken up residence on the inside of you? So I believe this is a key component to discipleship that a lot of times we're not pushing through, we're not presenting to people mm-hmm. what is available to them. We, yeah. we just actually, a couple weeks ago, we had a, a worship night and a young lady came up after me after the service and talked to me. And uh, I had given a prophetic word. Someone in here is being stubborn to receive what Jesus has for them. She came up, she said, that's me. And yeah. I, I, I led her over to a friend of mine. He led her to pray and invite Jesus in, and then immediately led her to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and she encountered God. She spoke out in tongues right then and there. Amen. And I, I was thinking, and I, I love him for this. I, I was said, I'm proud of you because you showed her what she really needed to mm-hmm. finish this process. And, um, and I think about how you know Jesus, at the end of John, at the book of John, he comes back and in chapter 20, he breathes on his disciples yes. and says, receive, receive the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. See, Jesus yeah. breathes the Holy Spirit out, but we yeah. must breathe him in. Yeah. And they don't have an encounter or anything like that right then and there, but he tells them to wait for the promise of the Father. Yeah. And then, watch this, the tongues of fire rest on them when the Holy Spirit comes. Mm-hmm. And for a Jewish man, they yeah. would have recognized yeah. that pillar of fire. The very pillar of fire that walked with them through the wilderness was now resting on each person. And this is what God wants to do for every believer in Jesus to encounter the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. Amen. Well, I want you to uh, look at the camera and uh, there's a lot of people watching and they have some challenges in their life and they have some issues and they just don't talk about it. Right could be depression, it could be suicidal thoughts, it could yeah. be sickness, it could be addiction, it could be. So just yeah. would encourage people and pray with them to be delivered Absolutely. because they can be delivered right now, right? Absolutely. Yeah, Jesus right. is alive it's yesterday, today, and forever. Absolutely. And also, if you would invite and pray with the people to receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. Some people, they know about it and says, oh, yeah, but I love your heart of passion and hunger for God because this is yes. the Holy Spirit. That's right. He's the one make us connect with the Father all the time and yeah. create the hunger. And there is nothing like it to yeah. be hungry for God all the time and yeah. passionate about Him and His That's kingdom. Right. That's right. So, Praise yeah. the Lord. Yes, absolutely. Uh, do you mind if I share a really course, quick story sure. before yes. I do? Yeah. The Holy Spirit gives us the power to live free from sin, to be yes. intimate. Mm -hmm. with the Lord, to understand the scripture, to be used by God. And I I just want to paint a picture that it's not even just about your own life being changed, Mm. but it's about God using you to change other people's lives. We had a, when we were in youth ministry, my my wife and I leading, uh, we had a worship and prayer time. This young lady comes in who I knew she was in our youth group, but she's about 18, just graduated high school. Mm. And I'm praying and I get, I get this picture, this word from the Lord. I walk over to her and I start praying with her and I say, hey, I see your sons. I don't know what that means. I mean, as far as I know, she's in high school. Yeah. She's not, she's not got a boy, <laughs> boyfriend. And she starts like losing it, crying, wow. you know, heavy crying. And I think, wow, God's touching her. I don't know what that means, but praise the Lord. Come to find out months later, I did not know this, but she was living a double life. She was out partying and she had gotten pregnant at a party and she had just found out when she walked into our worship and prayer time that she was pregnant. She Mm. had plans to abort this child. Mm. And she comes in and I speak this over her. You've got sons. Mm. And she starts crying. Well, then she goes out of there and she starts hearing her son's voice in her head. Wow. Talking to her, saying mommy and things like that. And and she then made the decision not to abort her son. Wow. She now she still attends our church and her boy is so cute. Wow. But I just thought I just think what could God do through us if we were really yeah. yielded the Holy and Spirit. submitted to the Spirit of God? And so, so beautiful. Yes, Father, we pray mm. in Jesus' name mm. to every person watching. And I, I take authority right mm. now mm. over every evil spirit, especially the spirit of lust that is gripping any person. Man or woman, there is no Mm. shame right now for the people of God 
And yeah. I command every spirit to leave in the name of Jesus. Mm. And if you're watching this right now, say, mm. name those spirits and say, mm. spirit of and, and leave in Jesus' name. Mm. I, I see a young man, your name is Daniel. Mm. And you have the spirit, you have depression mm. completely sitting on your life. It feels like a heaviness mm. on your shoulders. Mm. And I command that spirit of depression to go in the mm. name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for even a spirit. I, I can sense there's a spirit of pride on someone. Mm. You think that you can do it on your own. You think you have to take your life into your own hands to make sure that you're taken care of and all these things. And I just, I command that spirit mm. of pride to leave right mm. now in Jesus' name. Mm. You can no longer mm. stay and have residence mm. in these people of God. Mm. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Mm. And God, I pray that as these spirits leave these people's lives, we pray that the Holy Spirit yes. would take up residence Shri inside of every Shri single yeah. person in the name of Jesus. Mm. And if you're watching this right now, you've never been prayed for, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I pray right now in Jesus' name, mm. receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. Tell the Lord right where you are. Say, I receive the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come into my life. Burn away every other desire that is not for the Lord. Mm. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I pray that even now that they would mm. begin to pray out. Lord, that they would receive the, mm. the evidence of speaking in tongues. Mm. Where Jude 20 says, building yourself up in your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yes. yourself in the love of God. Mm. In Jesus' name, you will be kept in the love of mm. God. Begin to speak in tongues right now. Mm. Let, the, let the heavenly language flow out of your mouth right mm. now. Just begin to ask God mm. and say, Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I receive the Holy Spirit. Mm. I receive even my spiritual mm. language right now. Come into my mm. life. Take mm. up residence. Mm. Say this, I am your dwelling place. Yes. I am your mm. dwelling place, Lord. Yes. Father, we pray for complete freedom. Yes. And I pray that just as it says in Acts 1, that power would come upon mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. as they wait upon you yeah. in the name of Jesus. I actually believe even as we go mm -hmm. into this time of worship to close it out, that yeah. as you worship and as you pray, you're going to begin to feel even the rush of the Holy Spirit over you. Some of you are going to sense it's, it feels almost like a and electricity running through your body. Others mm. of you, you're not gonna feel a thing. Mm. But you, if you have asked, mm. you have received. Yes. It, the Bible says, if we ask, will mm. God give us these other things? No, how much more will He give us the Holy Spirit mm. for those who ask Him? So receive the Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus' mighty name, mm. in Jesus' mighty name, the Lord is releasing evangelists. Mm evangelists who've been stuck up in their home and not and afraid to share their faith you're going to become a different person Come as on. the holy spirit comes upon you there's going to be apostles you're going to be starting up movements mm. for the lord jesus mm. right where you are you do not even see it this is like a gideon moment for you you're hiding out and the lord is going to bring thousands and thousands of people to the lord jesus because of you he is setting you free right now but he's not just setting you free for you. Mm. He's setting you free to freely give. Freely we have received. Now go and freely give. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I see people who are, even now, you're being set free. Some of you are already speaking in tongues. Yes. You're feeling the, the Lord all over your life. I yes. just, I pray over you that you would go and share this with your friends. Mm. That you would go and open up the scriptures that I read tonight. Show them in the book of Acts, how the Holy Spirit would come upon people. Teach them and lead them to receive the Holy Spirit. Oh, Spirit of the living God, I pray that you would break out amongst the people. I pray that you would break out amongst the people. And Lord, bring them even into maturity. Help them understand what it means to live a life with the Holy Spirit, how to go where He goes, how to stop when He says stop. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on your people right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Wow. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Amen. Thank Praise you, the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. That Praise was amazing, God. amazing, amazing. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Well, we are uh, going to get into another time of worship and just uh, meditate of what you've heard. And God is touching so many people right now. And don't miss out the opportunities. Sometimes they only come once in your life. Wow. And this is your moment right now. Yes. Receive the Holy Spirit. Let's yes. worship. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Amen. And as we worship, I just feel like there's someone that's watching that needs prayer for their arm. They can't, they can't, uh, hold it up because they have cancer and right now if that's you receive right now Lord we just thank you in Jesus name by your stripes they are healed and made whole we bless what you're doing right now we command the cancer to leave so that they can be free to lift their arm to lift their hands and worship you in Jesus name
Jesus is Lord. He loves you so much. He died for you. This is all about, that's what we're here for, is the eternity. Do you know where you're going? Tomorrow is not secure. It's not guaranteed. If you are not confident, like all of us here, that your name is written in the book of life, that you've repented from your sins, that Jesus is your portion, this is your time. We're not playing games. You can gamble with money, but you don't gamble with your eternity. That's right. And we're so serious and so sincere because we love you and Jesus loves you so much. This is your opportunity. I went through it, every one of us. We got real encounter with God, real encounter with the Holy Spirit. Not talking about doing the religious stuff or going to church. I'm talking about real relationship with Jesus. Open up your heart now. If you're not confident, if you're not confident, if you don't know, what's in the other side of your eternity right now. This is your moment. It's simple things. It's simple things. He's not going to hold anything against you. He'll love you. He will forgive you. He will run to you. He's opened up his arms for you. Say, Lord, I come to you. I don't know. But I come, I confess my sin. I believe you are the Savior. You are the Lord. Come into my life. Change my life. Take away my shame, my guilt, my past and give me new life, like I was hearing from those people tonight. And He will do that if you're sincere, and He will write your name in the book of life. Repent of your sins, He will help you. Any addiction, any pornography, any kind of sins in your life, any bondage, He can take it away. He can set you free. He is willing to set you free. He is willing to deliver you. We are earthly parents, and we can do anything for our kids, and God will do anything to set you free. Thank you, Lord. You guys are amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. Wow. Pastor Luke, wow. The Rock Church in Anaheim. If you're nearby, this is one of the favorite, my favorite, one of the best church you can ever go. They preach the Word, not what pleases people, not social life. They preach the Word of God and great, great place to be. And uh, before we end that, we're going to sing the blessings over you and over your family. And thank you for being with us. And we just want to bless you with this uh, uh, song and receive it for you and your family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Children, their children, their children. May his favor 
Children and their children and their children.